and your example found. For sake me not, O Lord my God, be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, Lord my strong salvation. Good morning. Good morning. We have today being offered to our dear listeners. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Amen. A special welcome to our teaching staff uh, and uh, school staff, as they have an arts diocesan formation day today, and the kids are off school, which brings joy to many people. <laughs> uh, blessings on your day today. Uh, let's come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father and to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to St. Paul from the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of the disobedience of Israel, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the minds of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given him anything that he may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To God be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, with your great love, answer me. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will give and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Lord, with your great love, answer me. See the lowly ones and be glad. You who see God, may your hearts divide. For the Lord gives the poor, and his own who are in the in heart, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. The Lord is a great love and For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall dwell in the land and own it, and the descendants of his servants shall inherit it. And those who love his name shall inhabit. Lord, in his great love, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. He said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, 
Do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold the banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. So it looks like Jesus gave us permission not to have Thanksgiving dinner for family and friends, right? Well, we hardly met that. Um, it's really interesting when you read the Gospel of Luke, Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Of course, these are the synoptic Gospels, meaning that they have very similar sources of material. But each one of the Gospel writers emphasizes different things that are important to the community they were writing to. In the case of Luke, who was writing to a Greek community, uh, we're very blessed that he thought it was important to, to tell them all about the story of Jesus' birth and his early childhood. If, we, if it weren't for Luke uh, probably interviewing Mary and putting that in the Gospel, we would have no details on the birth of Jesus because there's nothing. Uh, in, well, Matthew says it in one line, but nothing in Mark and John at all. Uh, Luke also obviously was impressed with the women disciples that Jesus had because his gospel really emphasizes the important role of women in the ministry of Jesus. And finally, Luke emphasizes Jesus' special love for the poor much more than any of the other gospels. Luke is constantly talking about Jesus' love and care for the poor as we hear in this gospel where Jesus encourages his disciples in holding a banquet to invite the poor, crippled, lame, and blind that they'll never be able to repay you. So there's a really important emphasis that Jesus had on the poor and the needy. Mother Teresa, as we know, uh, built her ministry and her life on this particular gospel and this particular teaching of Jesus. And for those of you who subscribe to the Magnificat, there is a beautiful reflection on this gospel so I'm going to let you hear the words of Mother Teresa, because they're very inspiring. Today, besides the poverty, material poverty, that makes people die of hunger, cold, and in the streets, there's a great poverty of being unwanted, unloved, uncared for, having no one to call your own, no one to smile at, and oftentimes it happens to old people who we call shut-ins. They are nobody. They are just there. They are unknown, unloved, and unserved. When I pick up a person who's hungry for the street, I can give him a plate of rice and a piece of bread and satisfy his hunger. But a person who is shut out, who feels unwanted, unloved, terrified, the person thrown out from society, that poverty is so hurtful. There are many, many people old people, crippled people, mentally ill people, people who have no one, nobody to love them. They are hungry for love. And maybe that kind of love is in your own home, that kind of hunger is in your own home, your own family. Maybe there is an old person in your family, maybe a sick person in your family. Have you ever thought that your love for God can be shown by giving a smile? Maybe giving a glass of water? Maybe just sitting there and talking for a little while? The sisters in my community have found quite a lot of people who have forgotten what it is to love, what is human love, because they have no one to love them. And so begin by giving the joy of loving, and with that comes hope, because Jesus is there. He's alive and he loves us, and he wants us, and that's why he made himself the bread of life, to satisfy our hunger for love. He makes himself the hungry one so we can satisfy his hunger for human love. Though we cannot see him in person or touch him, but he makes himself present in the poor as he said, I was hungry, I was naked, I was homeless, and you helped me. So in the poor and in the hungry, you can touch Jesus, feed him. 
love the poor, and the poor become our hope for salvation of mankind. The saints always say the best things. So let us think about this gospel and uh, the particular call of Jesus for the hungry and the homeless. I'm very grateful that when we had our recent trunk or treat, we used uh, a chunk of the money that was given for admission to our food bank. I'm very grateful that our children uh, for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving drive bring in food that's used to feed many families. We, uh, we serve a complete Thanksgiving dinner, I think, to 75 families, which is pretty amazing, a full Thanksgiving dinner. And in addition to that, we give many bags of groceries on a weekly basis now, we're helping 40 families a week. So we're able to do what Jesus says, but most of all, let's do it with a smile and treat the person not as a, an, um, an abstract, um, inhuman face, but rather to recognize their dignity as created in the image and likeness of God. Please stand. Please stand as we bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. Well, Pope Francis and all the bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in preaching the Word of God with conviction and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, may the Holy Spirit lead and guide all government officials in enacting right and just laws that respect the sanctity and dignity of all life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, suffering, or enduring any kind of hardship, may the graces of the Sacred Heart of Jesus give them comfort and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world. When men and women who serve our own forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all deceased, whose names are listed in our parish book of life, for their eternal rest with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's intervening grace in Israel and Ukraine, for an end to war, violence, and racism, for a culture that respects the dignity of all life, for God's blessings in our teachers and school staff as they have their day of reflection today. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, please hear the prayers we offer, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, our God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. Lord, may these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for better my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion and time, option two. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, but whoever believes on me shall have life because of me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, this Wednesday we resume the uh, series The Search, the videos Who is Jesus and Are You Saved? Those will be shown at 6 30 p.m. in St. Joseph Hall. There's a complimentary meal available at 6 p.m. If you wish to order that, please contact the uh, church office by 4 o'clock today. And blessings on our teachers and staff today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, if you can, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who crawl about the world seeking the Lord of souls. Amen.